Donovan Mitchell has been the talk of New York for the last four weeks. He's been the story. He's been everything. And we've been speaking about him every single week on this show, including the sports loudmouths. Donovan Mitchell, by itself, is a huge story. And a lot of Knicks fans, including yours truly, believed that there was no chance he'd go anywhere but the New York Knicks. But I knew, when I know Danny Ainge has something to do with it, more than likely, the New York Knicks were going to get screwed. Danny Ainge has never liked the Knicks organization. He doesn't like James Dolan. He played for the Celtics most of his career. You know Boston don't like New York. When Donovan Mitchell, about five, six weeks ago, told the Jazz he does not want to play for the Utah Jazz anymore, everybody thought it was a sure thing that he was going to the Knicks. The New York Knicks thought no matter what they offer the Jazz, they're going to take it because nobody is going to win the battle for Donovan Mitchell because he wants to play in Madison Square Garden. Now we know what happened. The Cleveland Cavaliers won the sweepstakes for Donovan Mitchell. But now, a lot of NBA front office people, including a ton of GMs, believe that the Jazz purposely screwed Donovan Mitchell and traded him to the Cavs purposely because he didn't want to play for the Utah Jazz. That the Jazz knew that he wanted to play in New York. He wanted to play in Madison Square Garden. He grew up here. His family's here. They knew. You know how we're going to dig it right into his hip? You know how we can dig it right to him? We're going to trade him to an organization he doesn't want to play for. Even though they're as talented or more talented than most of these young teams in the NBA. Because they have a lot of talent. Mobley, Garland, this is a good team. Kevin Love is still there. This is a good young team with Allen and Karis LeVert. They're talented. Much more talented than the New York Knicks. But he didn't want to play for the Cavaliers. He wanted to play with the New York Knicks. And he didn't get his wish. And that has a lot to do with Danny Ainge. I believe it. I don't care what any writer is saying. I don't care what any analyst knows that Danny Ainge had no part of the trade, the talks. I don't believe it. He absolutely had his two cents involved in the conversation. We know Leon Rose wasn't. For some reason, Leon Rose had no information or conversation fully with the Utah Jazz. It had nothing to do with Leon Rose. That shows you what our GM, a.k.a. president, or whatever the hell he is, is doing. But it is absolutely embarrassing to watch an organization as prestige as the New York Knicks the most expensive basketball organization in sports, they can't land a guy. They can't land a superstar because none of these GMs, a.k.a. presidents, want to do business with the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And you negotiate with Gerson Rosas, who used to be in the Jazz organization, so they're going to have some ties. Now, granted, Dwayne Wade wasn't there and Danny Ainge, fine, but still, they have the ties with the Jazz organization where he's not going to want to try to fleece them like he should be trying to in a trade. So that's on the Knicks in, in itself, but I agree with you. Danny Ainge's pettiness, ill will towards Donovan Mitchell definitely should not have been a factor into this deal because if you're a team that is rebuilding, okay, they just trade Rudy Gobert. Now Mike Conley's also in trade talks too. You should not be trying to be petty and present the worst for your player. Your player wants to go to the Knicks. The Knicks had good offers. They had more than fair offers, even if you think, oh, we should get RJ Barrett and six first round picks. Get out of here. No. And you got a third as a result of what you should have gotten from the New York Knicks or even some of the other teams that were in early on in the bidding process. Also, Donovan Mitchell listed the Heat the Knicks and the Nets is the only three teams he wanted to go to. Obviously, the Nets aren't going to do it because that would mean they would have to trade Kevin Durant there, but Kevin Durant's not going to want to stay there. Miami, Pat Riley, another guy that wants to be stingy. You're not going to get an offer there. So that leaves the Knicks, who are offering you some good young players, and you didn't take it. Let's look at some NFL organizations that were petty with their players and now are in shambles. Let's look at the Houston Texans with Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins. The Seattle Seahawks with all their players that they lost from their Super Bowl team. And now they're probably two of the four worst teams in the NFL. That's what the Utah Jazz could be leading down by if they keep acting that way towards their players. No matter how well they did with the Gobert trade, it's not creating a good team culture to be like that. And you know the NBA. The players get disgruntled every other year, it seems like. This player wants out. Then two years later, he wants out from that team. You're not going to create a good idea. And nobody's going to want to play in Utah as it is already. So you're already creating a bad mantra for a, a city that's going to be very hard to do that. It's very embarrassing. Uh, I'm not surprised that the Utah Jazz and Danny Ainge 
wanted to hurt the New York Knicks. And the fans are sitting here today wondering why we didn't land Donovan Mitchell. Honestly, I'm not trading away R.J. Barrett. I'm not trading away O.B. Toppin or Grimes and four or three unprotected first-round draft picks when we believe that Even with Donovan Mitchell, those could be lottery picks. We don't know. Even if the Knicks received Donovan Mitchell in a trade, does that make them a top four seed? It doesn't. It might make them an eighth or seventh seed, or they could still not make the playoffs. All it takes is one injury. And if you did land Donovan Mitchell, it means more than likely R.J. Barrett is in a Utah Jazz uniform. Utah got Sexton and Marketing, and both guys can't stay healthy. None of those guys are as good as R.J. Barrett and has as much upside as R.J. Barrett does. R.J. Barrett is really Donovan Mitchell, a bigger Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's a better shooter, but besides that, R.J. Barrett is just as good. Better defender. Longer. Why would the Knicks trade their best young player for a player that's three or four years older than him and only is under three years of a contract? Who could decide three years down the road that he doesn't want to be there? And then they lose him. And those picks that they gave to the Utah Jazz become lottery picks. It doesn't make sense. Nope, not for that. And Obi Toppin at the same time, plus four first-round picks. Or them and... Obi Toppin could be special. Yeah, or him on his own with six first-round picks. Or all the other ridiculous trades that Danny Ainge thought were fair. And no. Obi could be their power forward in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. He's athletic. He can jump. When he started last year at the end of the season, yes, he was playing a lot of the other team's second players. It doesn't matter. There were two games that he had 40 or more points. His basketball IQ is very good, so. He's talented if he plays. And a lot of the game changer of that trade was Grimes. And if that's the case, Quentin Grimes better start this year. If you didn't want to trade Quentin Grimes and that was the reason why you didn't want Donovan Mitchell, he better start. He better play 25, 30 minutes a game. We have to see what Quentin Grimes could be. If Quentin Grimes is as good as the Knicks believe that he is and he was the steal of the draft, it's happened before. Jokic, he was a second-round draft pick. He's one of the best players in the league. They literally had a Taco Bell commercial airing when he got drafted. (laughs) Nobody cared about Jokic. Look how good he is as a player. Maybe teams passed up on a guy that they didn't think could fit the NBA style of game. But the Knicks did, and he was drafted late in the first round. And that's up to you, Mr. Tom Thibodeau. You have a reputation of wearing out your veteran players and getting them tired in the second half of the season, and then not playing your young players and getting them into a rhythm. Learn from your mistakes and actually play young players. And that starts with Quentin Grimes and Obi Toppin. I want to see Quentin Grimes playing this year. On national TV, I want to see Quentin Grimes playing in those big basketball games. I want to look forward to the future of this organization. And if Grimes is as good as people think he is, his shooting ability is like Devin Booker. I think he's a better defender than Devin Booker. I think he could defend multiple positions. He's got the ball handling skill. I think he could do everything. He could defend the three, the two, and the one. Having players like that are not easy to find. And guys that could shoot like him, he's a fantastic shooter. And he could actually get to the hole. He needs to work on his left hand. We know his weaknesses. But if he figures out his left hand, this guy could be as good as any two or three in the NBA. I don't know what he is, but we'll never know what he is unless he plays. Three and D guys are the wave of the game in the NBA, especially taller wings, too, which Grimes is, and he's physical, too. Good range. Great type range. range. Yeah, he had NBA-type range in his last two years of college, and it definitely showed. And his defense is very good, long, perimeter-type guy, can rebound for his size, too, and does a very good job, and he deserves that chance to start. We saw glimpses this year. Yeah. In 2022, we saw glimpses of his shooting Ability. In one game, he had 20 some my points. Right. He was a rookie, but he has to play enough where we can see his development. We saw him in the Summer League this year. He was one of the best Summer League players in all of the Summer League. I'm talking about every single team. Right. He was one of the best players. Knowing that Quentin Grimes had a good summer and he's working on his shooting, which he doesn't really need to. I, I think he's a fantastic shooter. And remember, if you know the story, Quentin Grimes was a point guard who couldn't shoot. When he went to college, he had to figure out his shot. He was shooting three, 400 shots a day at the three-point line. Figured his shooting ability and he's become one of the better shooters out of the draft. 
You need to get this guy on the court, and you have to give him the opportunity to succeed. The only way you're going to justify not doing that trade, too, because Quentin Grimes was that centerpiece that everybody wanted, not just the Donovan Mitchell trade, everything else. You have to give him the opportunity to play. If Tom Thibodeau doesn't do that, he's not going to be a Knicks coach very much longer. No, I don't think he's going to be the Knicks head coach very much longer either. I predicted he was going to be the Knicks head coach, and I'm going to say after this year, he won't be the New York Knicks head coach. There's only one guy that's right for this job right now. And he is Kenny Atkinson. He was offered the Charlotte Hornets job by Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan offered him that job. And that's a good team. They're a good young team. They have LaMelo Ball. They have a lot of good young players over there. But he didn't take the job. He decided to stay with the Golden State Warriors for another year. Why? Now, everybody knows he's a Long Island native. He's from this area. So is Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan went to Chicago after he got let go by OKC. I have always believed that Kenny Atkinson wanted the Knicks job. He changed Jeremy Lin's game. Jeremy Lin became a great player because of him. You can ask Jeremy Lin. He speaks highly of Kenny Atkinson. Every single point guard that's worked with Kenny Atkinson said that Kenny Atkinson changed his game. Karis LeVert turned into a good player. And one of the reasons why he turned into a good player was because of Kenny Atkinson. Remember Spencer Dinwiddie, a journeyman? He became one of the better bench players point guards in the NBA. Now he's starting in the NBA. Kenny Atkinson is a guy that you're going to hear a lot about going into the offseason next year because he will be available.